Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. This is part two of the trailer build video. Hopefully you can see behind me here that I have been working on the trailer. In this video, I'm going to kind of get you caught up to speed as to what I've done thus far. I'll show you what I'm working on now. I originally told you guys this was only going to be two parts, but I got to tell you, as in most of my projects, I've, I'm not going to say I bit off more than I can chew because I will finish this, but it's turning out to be a heck of a lot more work than I expected. That's pretty normal for projects that I do. When I conceptualize them, I think, oh, that's not too bad. But when I actually get into the project, it's a lot more involved than I expected. But no big deal. I'll show you where I'm at, and I'm pretty sure we can wrap this up in three videos. For starters, I have not really done any other work on the shop, and that is because I can't do any more loft work or anything until I get my trailer back. Before, I had that boat trailer, which I was able to haul stuff home with, but as you can see, the boat trailer has been cut up into pieces. So right now, I don't have any trailer. I have needed to bend a little bit of tube, so I took my tubing bender and I used this support was for something that I had at the old garage to hold it in place. So I took this over, ratchet strapped it around that tire, and then I ran a ratchet strap from the Nerf bar on the Baja over, over here to the actual uh, tubing bender and then I can that that holds it pretty securely in place and then I can actually use it to bend some tube so that allowed me to actually bend some pipe with that before I get that permanently mounted because I'm feeling like that's going to be mounted up on the balcony now here I have if you look here this black kind of exterior structure is what I made in the first video then you can see the white pieces inside are the old trailer I already showed you a time lapse of me chopping that trailer up and I used the pieces for that for the inside structure. This was my plan all along, that's why I bought this steel the exact same dimensions as this steel so that I could use it all to make the structure. I have since taken the axle apart, checked the wheel bearings, re-greased it, put all that back together, I gave the axle a cone of paint. Bought some new hardware to install it onto the leaf springs. Installed the leaf springs. If you remember in the other video, the leaf, the leaf springs on the old trailer were slippers or sliders, whatever, and the new one that I bought actually uses a shackle. So this should be a much more solid and a quieter ride down the road, hopefully. Everything on the inside, actually almost everything on the trailer, I still have to weld those, but everything else on the trailer is uh, completely welded. 
This is gonna have uh, two by sixes on it, two by sixes, two by sixes, two by sixes, and then I'll have two by sixes running this way. And this part will be open. I haven't decided if, I, if I'm gonna leave this open or if I put two by sixes across there, but for the most part, this will all be a flat bed, and then in the back here, it'll just kind of have legs coming back here for the Baja to ride up on. What I did yesterday is the trailer itself, like this is four inches by three inches, eighth inch wall. But this piece that the, the coupler connects to, which will be taking a lot, of, a lot of weight, is three inch by four inch, just like everything else, but it's three sixteenths thick instead of eighth inch. Now, if you look, it, it actually comes here and is cut. It's welded here, which that's, you know, a very weak point in the trailer's structure. One way that I could have made this is I could have taken the 3 16ths piece and run it through and made this all the same piece and it would go back and connect there. And then this piece, right now this piece is one solid piece. Instead of being a solid piece, this would be cut pieces that would connect in there. That would probably be a better way to do it, but this piece is a piece that I used from the old trailer, and it wasn't long enough to extend all the way back there. So I decided to connect it the way that I did, but I've added some things to make it super strong at this connection. You can see it comes in here, it's welded here. It's got this top plate, and this is also made out of 3 16 and that just strengthens this connection point, and it also continues 12 inches back this way. So that supports all that. And then if you look underneath, I also have a 3 16 plate that you can't see it all the way back because of the jack, but it goes six inches past the weld seam, and then it goes another six inches back behind it. So rather than this entire piece just being supported off of these four welds going around it. It's now got this plate underneath it, and then it's got this piece up top, which really adds a lot of strength. Now that alone made this connection really strong, probably strong enough, but I'm gonna make it even stronger by adding some inch and a half tubing that's gonna come from here and around and tie in to this piece, but it's gonna tie in to the bottom it's gonna tie into the bottom of this piece, and then as it comes over here, it's gonna tie in on the top. So that's gonna give this piece, which is this piece, a little bit of a pitch going down, which actually gives it a little bit of triangulation. So once that piece is welded up there, if this piece has a tendency to kind of bend or flex going up, it's actually gonna put a lot of pressure on this side piece because they're all gonna be in, in like little different planes. So, and of course, this piece, this piece here is, is also gonna add a lot of side to side structural integrity. So I think once I have all that tied in, I'm not gonna be worried about the strength of that piece coming into the trailer there. And then in addition to that, I've got, this is the jack that I'm gonna use here, and I'm gonna try and make this kind of cool by having this piece come in right underneath the jack here, so that when the jack is flipped up like it is, it'll kind of nestle in there, which I just think that's kind of cool. And uh, then what you'll do when you flip this jack, if you look, it overhangs a lot on the bottom, but just a little bit on the top. So when you pull the pin, I can't pull, I can't spin it around right now because I've got clamps holding this in place so it doesn't rotate. But what you'll do is you'll flip it all the way around this way because this end is so short it will skip right by the tubing that's down here. Or at least that's the plan. So I've been cutting, grinding. It's a little bit of a pain using those parts from the old trailer because where I weld it, it's got that white powder coat on there so I have to take it outside and grind some of that down so that's cost me some time. Um, but I've been coming out here all week and doing as much work on it as I possibly can. Now that I've got most of these pieces cut and ready to go for this little piece that's going to be running down here, I'm going to set the camera up and do a little time lapse as I grind and weld and get those in place.
All right, guys, so you just watched me weld that piece on, that piece on, and then I welded on the, uh, the trailer jack. I also had this piece, which I was going to weld right underneath the tongue here so that if the, the tongue actually does disconnect from the vehicle, rather than scraping along on this, which could be disastrous, it was going to have this so that it could ride ride along a little bit and maybe make it a little bit less of a disaster. But as I did that, I realized that there was a, a hole under there right where that piece was going to go. So I scratched this for now. I'll, uh, I'll probably make a longer one or a different one or just come up with something different for that, but I'm not worried about that right now. But let me show you how this jack works. <laughs> I th this is so cool. I love doing stuff like this. So we've got this piece and as you can see it connects down low here and it's so low that half of it even goes underneath like it's it only intersects with half of that the tongue piece there and then it comes around here and it connects at the top here so it's running at a different plane than the actual tongue which like I said gives it a little bit of a triangulated effect to give this even more strength so I'm real happy with how that came out, but check this out. If you take the jack, and you know, I've got, I've got the pin removed right now, so it's not locked in place. Can't swing it that way. It's not gonna work that way. So you gotta swing it around. It just barely clears there. And then it comes around, and it lays on there, yet the holes still line up so that the pins will be able to go in there. And it just barely interferes with the bar there. That's cool. I don't know why that's so cool, but that's awesome. People are going to see that and be like, well, how do you lower the jack? Well, you got to lower the jack like that. So that's cool. Super cool. I mean, I love stuff like this where you, you think about it and then you put the pieces together and, and you get what you're trying to, what you were like conceptualizing in your brain. The reason that I did that, the reason that I took those steps to keep the trailer jack as far back as possible, when I actually have this done and I'm using it on the Jeep, I need enough space for the real rear tailgate to be able to swing open. And I measured it out and I'm pretty sure I gave myself too much space. So once I actually have this in the real world and I'm using it, I'll swing open that gate and if I can shorten this, a little bit I'm going to because that'll just make the trailer a little bit strong or a little bit shorter and a little bit stronger so I wanted the the jack back as far as possible so that I've got some clearance there and just keeping the jack back is puts less stress on the tongue here I got to get that stuff done so that I can take it to get the inspection my end game is once I have a title for this and it's all registered is at some point in time to upgrade it to tandem axle. Not that I need it, that these axles are, this axle is strong enough to carry the bug, but if I'm gonna be taking this on some longer trips, I would really like the added security of having basically an extra axle on there so that if something goes wrong, you can always strap up the one axle or the hub that's failed and kind of limp yourself along. But I'm gonna get it all going like this with a single axle and then I'm just going to kind of keep my eyes open for any tandem axle 3500 pound set that I possibly see on Craigslist or something. So there is actually a lot of work left to do on it. Um, it's taking a lot longer than I expected but that's pretty normal for me. I really want to get it done because I want to get working on the loft and all that so that I can you know, continue figuring out where I'm going to put all my stuff in the shop and I want to get hammering on the bug. I've got some big ideas, some big plans for that, but I need to get things squared away. Well, number one, I need a trailer because I need to be able to take it to some off-road parks and I need the trailer to get uh, stuff going in here so I can finish setting up the new shop. So either way, I hope you guys liked the video. I hope not too boring. I know a lot of you guys are just looking for Baja or suspension geometry type stuff. 
Um, that's coming. I just got to get a couple things squared up here so that I can uh, get back to those Baja stuff. But um, shouldn't be too long before I get going on that stuff again. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it's possibly helping you guys or motivating you for whatever you might be working on. And I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.